Hi there, this is Math 7, Unit 7, Lesson 4, Solving for Unknown Angles. So begin first of all with a little true or false activity here on length relationships, and we have some line segments here. Just remember real quickly that as we refer to the length of a, of a segment, we do that by naming the endpoints, right? We have to talk about the endpoints, and that's how we name a line segment. So for example, if I'm talking about something called line segment AB, that means I'm looking at the endpoints being A and B. Okay, so I can have endpoints being A and B, I can have endpoints B and C, and I call it line segment BC, or I could call line segment BD, and those are the ending points I'm referring to, right? So from here to here, I might call that line segment BD, or something along those lines. Okay, so let's decide if each of these equations is true or false, and be prepared to explain your reasoning. The first one says that CD plus BC equals BD. All right, so what we're saying is we're saying that this length here, CD plus this length here, is equal to that full length there. Or in essence, if we were to take some patty paper, we could try this out real quick. We're saying that CD, which is here to here, right? And adding to that BC, which is here to here, is the same length as B to D, which indeed it is the same length there. So this shows using some patty paper, I can show how that actually works out. That's a pretty straightforward one. We would say that is definitely a true statement. When we look at the next one here, it says AB, which is this part right here, right? Plus BD, which is this whole part right there, equals CD, this little bit, and A to D, this whole bit there. So let's think this through. What are we saying exactly? If I use some patty paper here, some tracing paper, what are we saying? Well, we're saying that this length, first of all, AB, AB, that much right there, plus B to D. So we're gonna add to that here to the end. I'm out of paper there, but that whole length. So the whole length there is equal to CD. Let's just work backwards here. So we go from here to here, plus A to D. Well, A to D is gonna be off my paper, so I'm going from there, here, from D, all the way over. I'm gonna extend beyond that, and I'm gonna go too much, because A is way over here. So A, D, when I add it to the C, D, is gonna be greater than, so it's actually not gonna be true. If I was to use an inequality, I'd actually say that, that this is actually greater than that one, so this would be a false statement. It's not equal. On the next one, we have AC, this length right there, minus the AB. So that's like saying this. So instead of saying, if I have A to C, that part, and I remove the A to B part. So we get rid of this part there. So now I, all I have left is from here to here. That is equal to, it says, AB. Well, let's see. If I take this part that I just sketched out and I put it on top of AB, we notice that that is not true. AB is from here to here. We have a difference there. That is not true. AB is actually less than that. So we're gonna say that is another false statement. And then finally, our last one, we have BD, which is this whole length here to here minus CD, so we get rid of this part, so we're left with just this bit, B to C, equals AC, here to here, minus AB, which is getting rid of this part, so we're left with, what are we left with? This line matching that line, which indeed they do, this would be a true statement for that one right there. All right. In your next activity that you do in class today, your teacher gives you a problem card or a data card, and you're not gonna show that to your partner, but you wanna be looking at the problem that you have or the data information that you have. Look at the information you have. If you have a problem card, you need to think about what kind of questions you can ask your partner in order to solve that problem that you might have. Be specific and explain how you're gonna use that information to solve the problem that you do have, and explain your reason to your partner. If you have the data card, remember to read your information silently and ask your partner what specific information do you need and wait for them to ask for that. Only give the information that's on your card. So don't figure things out for them. Let, they, let them work things out. And if they ask for something, ask them why they need it. 
Okay, so it's a good little activity for you there. And activity three is called what's the match? It says match each figure to an equation that represents what's seen in the figure. For each match, explain how you know it is a match. So let's take a look at what we have here. I have, first of all, in figure A, I notice that I'm talking about two angles that seem to match. Remember, these are what we talked about as being vertical angles, right? Those are vertical angles when they match across one another there. Looking at this one on B, I can see I have G plus H going to make a supplementary angle there. So I'm just going to make a little note here. Supplementary is what's taking place in that one. On this one, this is interesting. I can see that I have supplementary happening right here, right? I'll make a little note that I have supplementary happening on the top. But I also have this G angle, which is going to be across from there, which tells me that it's a little bit of a vertical angle as well happening. So I have a couple different pieces in that picture. Not sure what the question is going to be yet, but let's just see what's next. On this one, I can see that because of the right angle, this whole section altogether should be complementary, right? It should be complementary. Uh, but I also have a missing piece, but because it's across there to there, I notice I have a vertical angle happening right there with that G. And then over here again, we have another example of a supplementary angle taking place with all those added together to get to that, that, um, that, that supplementary angle here. So let's see, here are my different equations. I have, first of all, we wanna match the equation to the, to, the, um, to the figure. So a G plus an H equals 180. So I'm looking for a supplementary one here, aren't I? Where I have just an angle plus an angle equaling 180, or totaling up there. The best one for that one's gonna be right here with B, isn't it, right? Because in B, what I can see is that I have an angle G plus another angle H equals 180 degrees. So that would make sense for number one. So number one is definitely gonna be B. For number two, it says G equals H. Well, where do I have an example where that's for sure the G equals H? Here, I don't see it being for sure equal. Here, not for sure. Maybe they're similar. Here, no, not for sure could be, um, although in, in reality, looking at it, it's quite possible, um, just based upon some angles that are there, but not for sure. But here, definitely, this is an example of vertical angle. Those are certainly gonna match. So G equals H in choice A right there. So that's gonna work for that one. Number two, two H's plus one G equals 90. Well, 90, remember, is the complementary and back in my notes, I use complementary in option D, where I had an H and an H, and the G comes across as a vertical angle. So I have two H's plus one G definitely equals that 90 degree complementary. And we can tell it's complementary here because of that little right angle right there. So that's gonna work for D. On um, eight, number four, we have G plus H plus 48 equals 180. So I'm looking for a supplementary. I can see here on this one I have, what do I have? 48 plus a G plus an H equals 180 degrees, which matches that one. So E, it's gonna go with number four, which leaves me with C for this one. Let's see why. I have a G plus H plus 35 is 180. Well, the G goes across as a vertical angle. So 35 and a G and an H is supplementary makes sense for that one. So this is G plus H plus 35 equals 180. And that's going to work great. All right. So we're just putting the pieces of the puzzle back together there to figure that out. Let's take a look at your summary for the day. I'm not going to, are you ready for more? But you can. There's some great questions to talk about angles dealing with uh, our minute hands on a clock and what you can figure out from that. So our summary today is that we can write equations that represent relationships between angles, right? So I can look at something like this and say, well, because I have an X and a 42, I know that I can do an X plus a 42, and those combined are gonna give me the supplementary angle, which is gonna be equal to 180 degrees. I could look at something like this and just recognize quickly that because it's a vertical angle, that 28 degrees on one side is gonna be equal to the Y on the other side. And in something like this one here, where perhaps it's pretty clear it's a right angle, complementary, we could say that the angle Z 
plus the 64 degrees it's given is gonna add up to be 90 degrees in total. And so we can create equations from the relationships that we get with angles. So go ahead and pause there and work on your homework and then let's come back and take a look at how you did tonight. All right, so here we go with your homework for lesson four, unit seven, math seven. It says that M is a point on line segment KL and NM is a line segment. Select all the equations that represent the relationship between the measures of the angles in this figure. All right, so let's see what's gonna be true. First, A, it says that A equals B. Does this angle equal that angle? This is an acute angle, that is an obtuse angle. It's definitely not gonna be true. B, A plus B equals 90. That would be true if we end up with a complementary angle, 90 degrees. But this is not 90 degrees. We would say this is gonna be what? Yep, supplementary. So B is not gonna work, but D definitely will. I'm just skipping over here because why? A plus B is 180, so that's gonna be great. C says that B equals 90 minus A. 90 minus A? Um, I don't know if that's true or not. It could be true, maybe, but I don't think so because there's no 90 anywhere, so that doesn't make any sense at all. For E, we have 180 minus A equals B. How do you arrive at that one? Let's see. If I do 180 degrees and I eliminate this part here, what am I left with? B. So that would make sense. You can also get that by doing what? By doing the algebra part and subtracting A from both sides so that you have B equals 180 minus A, matching that one right there. So E is gonna work just fine. And F, 180 is B minus A. So B, and take away that, equals 180. I mean, that is just doesn't make any sense at all, <laughs> right? That's like saying that I'm gonna take this angle measurement here, B, and I'm gonna take off part of this one here because it kind of matches the A. And if I remove that, now what's left in here, that's 180 degrees. It's clearly not, so that would not work. Number two, which equation represents the relationship between the angles in this figure? All right, so what do we have? We have a B, an 88, and another B. So in essence, what do we have? We have two of the Bs plus the 88 that we know, and because it makes this nice straight angle, that is gonna be supplementary, it's gonna be equal to 180 degrees. So where do we see 2B plus 88 equals 180? Right there in choice D. Number three, segments A, B, A, B, E, F, and C, D intersect at point C, so they all cross right there. And angle A, C, D is a right angle, got it? Find the value of G. All right, so if this is a right angle, what it tells me here is that because it intersects at this point right there, if this is 90 degrees, then the whole thing is 180, right? So the whole thing is 180, but we've removed this 90 right there. So it tells me that what's left right here between 53 degrees and G is another complementary angle, right? Which means it's gonna be equal to 90 degrees. So I really have the equation 53 plus G equals 90. That plus that equals 90. It's the other half of this arc right there. So to solve, we subtract 53 from both sides. And we have 10 minus three is seven, eight minus five is three. So G equals 37 degrees. All right, over here we have A, B, C, and D. I'm gonna quickly just jot down D real quick because the answer for D on, is on my next page. So it's 0 0.80 x and the solution for e is 1 minus 0 0.8 x all right that's my those are my options and that's just on on you on your page you can see them all at once so which ones uh explain the result of decreasing x by 80 percent decreasing x by 80 percent meaning we had a hundred percent and if we're going down so let's pretend we had a hundred dollars right if i had a hundred dollars and i decreased by 80 percent I'm gonna be dropping this down to what? $20. That is a decrease of 80% decrease going down. I had 100 and I lost $80 of it. 80% went down to 20. 
that's my decrease. Okay, so that's what's kind of taking place if you think about it with money. So to find a decrease, then we're doing really, this is what? This is gonna be, if I have $20 left, I can think of it being as 20% of the original is one way of thinking about it. 20% of the original is 0 0.20 um, times whatever I had to begin with of, of X, right? So I have 20% of the original is one way of thinking about it. So when I think about it as being 20% of the original, I look over here, I just have 20 over 100. 20 over 100 is the same as what? As a decimal, 0 0.20. So that's gonna work just fine, that's 20%. Here, this would be an example of how we did it back um, in, in on your old lessons, right? Where you have 100, because I could have 100 over 100, so I have the whole amount minus 80% of an amount. So what do I have left? When I do 100, why do I do 100 over 100? Because that's my starting value, and 100 over 100 is one. So when I do 100 minus 80, I end up with what? Again, 20 over 100x, which is the same as b, so that should be just fine. Here we have 100 minus 20, so that actually is 80 over 100x. That's gonna give you what 80% of it is. That's not decreasing by 80%, that is actually 80%. That would be a decrease of only 20%, so that's not gonna work. This one here, 0.80, is again 80% of the value, so that's not going to work as well. Okay, we'd say no to that one. And here, we have 1 minus 0.08, which becomes what? 0 0.20, and then x. And again, that's 20%. That would work fine. So we have three solutions, A, B, and E. And let's turn the page to look at number 5. Okay, on number five, Andre is solving the equation four times x plus three halves equals seven. He says, I can subtract three halves from each side to get four x equals 11 over two, and then divide by four to get x equals 11 over eight. Kieran says, I think you made a mistake. So how can Kieran know for sure that Andre's solution is incorrect? Well. The best way to do that would be to use substitution. So if they see if, if Kieran was to substitute 11, 8 for x and then solve, either it would be equal to 7 or it wouldn't be. Okay? Describe Andre's error. Well, what is Andre's error? The first thing he does here is he subtracts 3 halves from each side. Notice the 3 halves is inside of the parentheses. I can't really do anything what's in here if there's a number on the outside. I have to deal with this four first. And so he really did things out of order. If he divided by four first, you'd end up really with what? You'd have four times x plus three over two equals seven. What he needs to do first of all is he could divide both sides by four or if he chose to, right? he could um, multiply that, that through, right? And, and multiply it around. So if we multiplied this out, we could get a different solution there. I would recommend he just goes divide by four, divide by four. So you have x plus three over two equals seven over four. And now you can subtract three halves, subtract three halves, and then you do it in that order. Again, three halves I probably couldn't, I wouldn't do, you need a common denominator, so that becomes minus six fourths, right? Times two there, times two there. Seven minus six is one, so you end up with a one fourth is what x is equal to. If that's a solution, I should be able to plug that back in and get the right um, answer there. But that's the way he probably should have done that problem. All right, number six, solve each equation. So here we go, solving each equation, we have 1 7th x plus 3 fourths equals 9 eighths. So that what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna subtract 3 eighths from both sides, or 3 fourths, sorry. So I'm gonna subtract that, first of all. I can't really subtract th uh, with the denominators being different, so let's make a common denominator. I have an eight and a four. Let's double this side to make it eight. So doubling the three becomes a six. So we're gonna subtract six eighths. So nine minus six eighths is 
three eighths. So we're not done yet. Right now what I have is now one seventh equals three eighths. Okay, I could rewrite that if you'd like. So let's rewrite it for you. One seventh x equals three eighths. Now I'm gonna multiply by the reciprocal here, which is seven over one, seven over one. And when I do that, I'm left with x equals 21 over eight. All right, number, letter B. Let's subtract two thirds from both sides, all right? I need to get a common denominator, let's use six. So I'm doubling times two, four times two is, two times two is four. So five minus four is one. So on this side, I'm left with one six. This side I have one fifth. I'll multiply by the reciprocal, five over one. So on this side, I'm left with just x equals, what's five over five over one times one over six? Five, six. This one here, let's subtract two thirds from this side. So we're gonna do, um, so it's a negative two thirds, right? Negative two thirds, got that there. Need a common denominator to put those together. So let's make it a six, this is times two. So times two becomes negative four. To make this a six, over here we have times three, so that becomes nine. So nine minus four is five six. So four thirds x equals five six. You with me so far? I know I'm kind of moving both sides here. To get this part by itself, multiply by the reciprocal, which is three fourths. So x is gonna be equal to, multiply this out, I can reduce, reduce, five eighths. All right, and this one, we're gonna subtract 7.9 from this side, and that becomes 1.2. So I have 0.3x equals 1.2. Divide this by 0.3 on both sides. So x is gonna be equal to what? x is equal to 1.2 divided by 0.3. If we do the work here, we have 0.3, little division action, right? Move the decimal over one, move the decimal over one, and put my satellite dish up on top of my house. Three goes into one zero times, three goes into 12 four times, four times three is 12 with no remainder. So my answer is simply gonna be four. And finally this one, let's subtract 8.78 from there. So we borrow, we borrow, 13 minus eight is five, nine minus seven is two, decimal point comes down, 10 minus eight is two. So 2.25 equals 0.02x. So we have to divide again, so here's 0.02 going into 2.25. Decimal moves over two spaces, decimal moves over two spaces, and I put my satellite dish up on top of my house right away. Two goes into two one time, that's two, zero. Bring the two down, two goes into two one time, that's two, zero. And bring the five down, two goes into five, a whole two times, which is four. The remainder one, bring a zero down there, two goes into 10, five times. So we end up with 112.5 for choice E. All right, the last one I believe here, a train, train travels at a constant speed for a long distance. Write two constants of proportionality for the relationship between distance traveled and elapsed time and explain what each of them means. So we're looking for that constant proportionality as we back from unit two, so a little bit of review here. Okay, and when we do that, we say, let's pretend this is our X and this is our Y. And so our k value, our constant proportionality is what? It's y divided by x. So taking a look at what we have here, I can use any one of these numbers if I wanna use, okay, because it's constant rate. I could do 180 divided by four. I could do this one with a decimal, it doesn't matter. Let's look at this one real quick. Let's do 180 divided by four. When I do 180 divided by four, what do I find out? Well, I find out that it goes in there about 45 times. So I actually get a constant proportionality of 45 to one. Okay, now that's the distance, right? This is the miles per hour, okay? So what does this tell me? One is I have 45 miles in one hour. That's one way of looking at it. The thing with the constant proportionality is remember, we can actually just change the order around to get the other K value by going the other direction. This is also going to be 1 45ths of an hour to go one mile. So this is when I have 45 to 1. This is when I have 1 to 45. All right? 
this is going to be in this case here hour 45 miles so 1 45th of an hour per one mile all right that's it for today we will see you next time